guys and welcome to another video. Uh, you've joined me here at one of my club tickets here on the Isle of Wight and I've come down just for sort of a 24 hour session really. I got here about lunchtime and I'm probably going to leave you know sort of late morning tomorrow morning um, just after I think bike time's over really. Um, but yeah I've just uh, come down really to uh, show you guys a little uh, hook bait edge that I've been uh, playing around with. Cause this lake here doesn't fish that well on pop-ups apparently. I, I normally fish pop-ups as you'll know from previous videos but um, I think this lake fishes better with kind of bottom baits and kind of balanced bottom baits particularly. Um, so I've kind of worked out a way of, of balancing the hook bait perfectly to take away the weight of the hook and any other sort of rig components so that the weight of the bait or the sort of buoyancy if you like of the bait is the same as your free offerings so that the fish kind of don't detect any unusual you know resistance when they try and suck up the bait so stay tuned for later in the video where I'm going to show you that and yeah hopefully something will happen tonight or tomorrow morning and I'll have some fish to show you along the way um, please consider subscribing to the channel we do quite a lot of uh, videos I try and keep it fairly regular with uh, hints and tips along the way and rig time videos and, and vlogs such as this one but within those vlogs I always include kind of my tactics and, and tips along the way to help you guys catch a few more fish so if that sounds good click subscribe um, it doesn't cost anything and it really helps me to keep the channel going and uh, you know hopefully grow the channel uh, and get better content for you guys so so yeah just click subscribe guys um, so yeah we're uh, as I said, coming into the evening now, and it's late March. Um, we've had, you know, an average winter, not too cold, but the last sort of couple of days have gone a bit, bit warmer, a bit sunnier. Pressure's quite high, um, and it's been, you know, sort of t-shirt weather today. Been sat in the sunshine. I've seen fish cruising around near the surface uh, and in the margins and stuff. So I sort of sat up on some fish where I could see them. Um, and now we're coming into the evening. It's cooled off a bit. The sun's kind of going down. And um, yeah, I'm just hoping tonight the fish kind of have a little feed, find my little traps that I've set with these balanced baits, and uh, yeah, something hopefully something will happen. So stay tuned to to see how um, how I go about balancing my hook baits perfectly. Um, this will work with any size of hook and any sort of uh, bait really. So it's quite a versatile little tip for you guys. So yeah, um, I'll I'm gonna stick kettle on now probably uh, just watch the water until dark maybe see some fish moving and potentially kind of move on them in the morning if nothing's happened in the night um, but yeah I'll keep you guys updated along the way if there's any fish obviously I'll show you those and if there's anything uh, kind of interesting to show you then I'll, I'll show you that as well so I hope you enjoy the rest of the video guys um, it's the middle of the night um, it's literally about half past 12 quarter to one and about half an hour ago the uh, left hand rod has absolutely melted off uh, just fished on that little balanced bottom bait that I was talking about um, that I'll show you tomorrow and uh, yeah we've got ourselves a nice angry 20 pound four ounce common uh, it's absolutely freezing um, I'll show you a bit of footage in a minute um, there's frost all over the bivvy all over my rod bag all over the net um, and the mat was frozen solid as well um, and for the end of March you know it's, it's pretty cold it's about minus two and uh, I had all my clothes on my, my coat my salad pets you know I was in my uh, sleeping bag thermal blanket on everything completely tucked up and uh, if I'm honest with you I would have rather stayed in there but um, this common's definitely warmed me up it's a lovely fish uh, so if it's going to behave itself I'll get it up for you to have a look um, 
I'll just give it a bit of water. And yeah, fingers crossed. It's going to uh, calm down a bit because it's it's pretty wild. <laughs> Uh, it didn't fight particularly hard and I think that's why it's still pretty angry now because it, it didn't didn't really tire itself out very much so it's got lots of energy left <laughs> so it's probably going to beat me up this, uh, this this could be fun guys <laughs> alright we'll have a little go anyway It's not playing ball at the moment. <laughs> right, this time. There we go. That's a lovely common, just a little bit over twenty pound. This lake's got quite a lot of fish um, of this sort of stamp. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to come get a bend in the rod and uh, catch some lovely fish like this in cold conditions. Fish is actually steaming. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, the water temperature's um, over 11 degrees in this lake because it's, cause it's quite, um, quite shallow. It's, it's heated up with this warmer weather we've had in the daytimes. So the fish, you know, has been in that 11 degrees water and then it's come into the minus two air and uh, yeah he's actually steaming when I'm holding up there um, which is pretty crazy but yeah there he is nice fish I'm well happy with that one I'm glad I came now I was sort of uh, unsure what to do because I tried to go to the day ticket but it was booked up and you know it's hard work on there at the best of times so I fancied um, fancied somewhere you know with a bit more of a chance of a fish and yeah I'm glad we've got one I'm well happy with that it's a, it's a lovely fish I'll just flip it around and show you the other side and there you go yeah so 20 pound four ounces just caught on a balanced Escor 15 mil bottom bait and I'll show you in the morning when we've got a bit of daylight how I go about balancing the hook baits to um, to match any size of hook and uh, and any hook bait as well so yeah I'll get this one back hopefully get a little bit more sleep and I'll catch up with you guys in the morning <laughs> Um, I've just been rudely awoken by a bream on the middle rod um, it's about about half five in the morning and as you'll see from some of the footage it's absolutely freezing um, we're literally the last couple of days of March now um, and it's been warm in the day you know 14 degrees or something like that sat in a t-shirt yesterday and I knew it was going to get a little bit chilly last night but I didn't realize it was going to be quite as cold as it was and um, just after that fish that I landed, um, got back into bed and then I guess the temperature must have dropped by about five or six degrees because literally as I've woke up to sort that bream out, everything is, is crispy <laughs> and I went to get the net for the bream and it was literally frozen to my barrow. I've sort of rested it up against the barrow. It's, it's frozen to the barrow. I had to like pour water on it to get it off. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel pretty lucky to have had that common in the night. It was a lovely fish as well, you know, nice to get a 20 pounder because this lake's got a lot of doubles in it. Um, and you know, a few 20s as well, but you know, you're more likely to have a double, I think. Um, and it's only my third time fishing the lake. 
and I've actually caught on every trip now just one fish but you know it's nice to know that the bait's working and the rigs and everything um, so yeah speaking of rigs um, in a minute after I've had my breakfast and I'll have a cup of coffee and everything um, I'll run you through the rig that I've used on this session uh, to catch that fish and also we're going to talk about how to perfectly balance your bottom baits to take away the weight of the hook and any other rig components uh, and it works for any size of hook as well so you know most shop bought wafters they're usually sort of aimed at balancing a size 6 hook I think um, but this way you can kind of balance anything you want so if, you, if you're if fishing for smaller fish and you're using like a size 8 or even a 10 um, you can still balance your hook bait to match that and also, you know, in France, you might be using a sort of a bigger hook, like a, a four or a two, or like a continental hook, which is a bit thicker gauge, so a bit heavier, you know, and you want a hook bait to match that. Well, this technique will, will help you do that, hopefully. So, so yeah, uh, stay tuned, guys. We'll be showing you that in a little while. And, yeah, I'm just going to sit and take in the atmosphere. It's a lovely morning. We've got steam coming off the lake. We've got birds singing. No geese on this lake. If you've seen my previous videos, um, there's a lot of geese on the day to get where I fish, and sometimes you can't even hear what I'm saying. So it's, uh, it's a real nice break to not hear them. And uh, yeah, lovely dawn chorus. I think it's going to be another warm day today. So next time you speak to me, I might be wearing a few less layers, but uh, at the moment it's still Baltic. <laughs> so yeah, I think I've definitely earned a coffee and. Um, I'll get back to you a little bit later and show you how we balance the hook baits perfect. Right guys, so as promised, um, here's the rig that I've been using and the little special tweak with the hook bait that um, helps you balance it perfectly with any size hook. So the actual rig itself, let's see if I can get that close for you. Um, that's just my tweaked version of a, a blowback rig. Um, got an oval ring on the shank, size 6 angling iron, DuraPoint anchor hook, a nice bit of shrink tube, liner liner style, uh, a couple of blobs of putty, just to keep it pinned down, and, um, and some strippable coated braid just with the last sort of couple of inches near the hook strip back to give it a bit of flexibility and also that allows the hook to drop down um, when the bait's picked up you know it sort of lies on the bottom like that and then when when the bait's picked up the hook will drop down so it's so it's in that prone position for when mr carp comes along and picks it up hopefully um, but yeah the uh, the little difference i've made just to balance it um, it's not, you know, not something I've invented, but my way of balancing it, um, I've not seen anyone do before. Uh, so I've got a little, uh, if you can see there, a little plug of zig foam. Um, now, before you click away, bear with me. I'll, I'll explain to you in a minute how I do this a little bit differently. Um, so you can use uh, cork if you like, or um, obviously zig foam. I've got the um, Zangli and iron stuff here. I hope you can see that there. It comes in a nice variety of colours. Um, and the beauty with foam over cork is that you can choose different colours, you know, and say if you're fishing over corn or something, then yellow's good. Um, I find white's really good with the s core because after it's been in the water for a while, it tends to wash out quite pale and white sort of stands out a little bit and um, makes it look similar to that but just stands out that little bit over it so it's not blatant but it's enough to catch the fish's eye you know so cork's good but I, I prefer foam because you can choose the colour and also with um, foam it absorbs liquids as well so once you've plugged your bait with it um, you can dip that in your, in your pot of flavour and leave it for a bit while you just sort some other bits out and then come back and it should have absorbed some of that flavour. So in the winter it's a really good tactic. Um, you can 
you know, get a bit of extra attraction around your hook bait. Um, but any time of year, um, coming into spring, well, we're in spring now, and it's a good tactic because a bit of colour is always good in the spring, and also, you know, a bit of um, extra attraction because you're not putting a lot of bait out. It's nice to have a bit of extra attraction um, for that minimal amount of bait, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, the way I go about actually balancing this perfectly um, is I take my, my hook, so choose a hook of your choice. I've got the um, Angling Iron Durapoint Anchor Hooks here. Um, these are an amazing pattern of hook if you've not seen them yet and, and they've just brought out a size 6 which is kind of perfect for for UK sort of fishing in not too extreme situations you know I'd probably go up to a 5 or something or even a 4 if I was sort of snag fishing and that but a 6 is nice and subtle and not too heavy um, and then I've got my oval rig ring as well now what I do to get the balance right is before I tie up the rig I'll um, I'll get my bit of foam and my hook and my oval rig ring because they're the bits that sort of weigh the most um, and I'll put the ring onto the hook and then I'll put the hook into the foam and then using a tub of water you can put that in and the foam hopefully if you've used enough well you know use a decent bit of foam and it should float to start with and then you want to trim it down uh, so it only just sinks but you want it to sink um, so it sort of goes down steady to the bottom of the leg, you know bottom of the, the tub that you're using um, so just trim it off bit by bit until it just sinks down and stays on the bottom um, and then when you come to tie up your rig and you drill out the the boilie um, to put the foam in you're just taking away that little bit of extra weight, extra buoyancy, if you like, out of the bait when you drill it, so that the foam going in, it just perfectly balances it. So it will sit on the bottom of the lake um, and the bait will sit, you know, sort of on the bottom, not not kind of flying up everywhere, hopefully. Um, but it just acts the same as the freebies and that's what you're trying to achieve here, really. When the carp comes over, you know, they, if they're finicky fish, they'll um, they just suck at the same sort of strength for every bait. And if one is particularly heavier than the rest, they'll reject it. You know, so this takes away that extra weight of the hook and the the ring, and gives it the same sort of buoyancy um, as the freebies. So that's my little tip for doing it. Um, I'll show you some underwater footage. Um, of how it looks on the bottom but yeah this rig uh, is my just my normal sort of tweaked blowback rig I'll put a link in the description for how to tie this up because um, I did a sort of in-depth video on this rig before so I don't see the point going through it but but you can use any rig you know like a KD rig would work or just um, a standard knotless knot if you want or you know whatever bottom bait rig you're confident with um, a German rig would work quite well I think uh, you know like a wafter rig or you know snowman rig type setup um, will work perfectly with this but you know my, my rig has been quite successful for me as you've seen in previous videos so um, check out that link in the description to see how you tie it Right, um, it's now about 8 o'clock in the morning and um, I was just in the middle of trying to film 
that little section for you about balancing your hook baits and as if to, to further prove that it works we've managed uh, another lovely fish slightly bigger than the last one as well so that's two two twenties so far on this session um, <coughs> and this one's absolutely gorgeous you'll have to excuse the um, the footage I'm, <coughs> I'm really struggling with the bright sunlight here um, I've had to put a filter on the camera and everything so it might not be my finest ever footage but but yeah, hopefully you can see the fish and uh, and see that this uh, this technique with the hook baits really does work. Um, so yeah, an absolutely stunning bronze-coloured common. If I can if I can get him to behave for you, <laughs> they're pretty lively this time of year. They're just they're just waking up from winter and. Um, seem to be full of beans. Hopefully you can see on the footage there, it gave me the real run around when I was trying to bring him in, but uh, here we go. Here we go. And that's 23 pounds, eight ounces. Uh, so a bit bigger than the last one. Again, caught on the balanced S-core bottom bait with the, uh, the zig foam and he really went like a train this one uh, you can tell by the length of him he's uh, quite an old fish but uh, quite lean I imagine could potentially have been bigger had he had a bit more food along the way uh, there's quite a few bream in this lake so they tend to keep the weight of the carp down a bit but um, lovely lovely old common this one um, and yeah, absolutely over the moon to have another one to show you. Um, as I said, I hope this footage is all right. I can't really tell because the sun's all in my face and everything, but um, it's quite hard to film because uh, there's not really anywhere in the shade that I can that I can get so I can show you it properly, but hopefully that, that shows up all right. Um, I'll just flip him around to the other side. There he is. Lovely 23 and a half common. I really love commons. Um, hopefully this year I'm going to be going after a PB common on my um, road trip video, so keep an eye out for that. Going up to Lynch Hill and possibly Bluebell Lakes if I'm lucky. Uh, and they've got some pretty massive commons in there, so I'll be trying for a new PB. Um, but yeah, this one will keep me happy until then. <laughs> Right guys, uh, I'm hiding in my bivy as you can see. The sunlight's so bright, it's just making filming almost impossible really. Um, it's either, you know, really, really bright or just, you know, really uh, harsh. Um, so yeah, in here at least I've got a bit of sort of steady sunlight. There's uh, too many sort of shadows and bright bits uh, out there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, enough about that. But anyway, I hope that was helpful for you. The um, the balancing of the hook baits there and you can use that for any bait really you don't have to drill out the bait you could use it with like a tiger nut and just um, have a bit of foam sort of tipping it uh, and it, it makes like a bit of a snowman set up with a tiger nut um, or you could you know you could even do it with a drilled pellet you know I've, I've um, used that in the past where you get those those uh, halibut pellets that are drilled out and you can use a bit of foam on the top of that which tips it but also helps the um, hair stay on because quite often with those drilled um, pellets you find that because the hole in them is quite large they can slide and then the hair stop comes out uh, and then they fall off the hair so having a bit of foam on the top stops that from happening as well so that's another tip for you but yeah it's just an idea to to try and balance your hook bait so that when a fish sucks at it it behaves as naturally as possible um, you know, it's impossible to get it exactly how a freebie would be. But if you can take away some of the weight of the hook and everything, 
at least when a fish sucks, it can fly up enough into its mouth to to sort of get in there, and then and then they move a little bit, and it catches hold. Hopefully, um, I mean, who knows what really goes on underwater? But at least you know, trying these things and seeing if they work, that can uh, sometimes gain an edge over fish, which uh, do tend to get quite pressured, and uh, you know they they wise up pretty quick. So it's worth kind of trying to be a little bit different. And I like the idea that you can change the colour of the foam depending on what works on your lake uh, or what bait you're using. You know, if you're using like a red bait, like the new uh, Megaplex from Richworth, I'll probably use with red, I'll probably either use red foam or pink or something, you know, to try and match it a little bit. Um, just kind of what makes me confident, you know. I don't know if it really matters, but perhaps you could let me know in the comments uh, your favourite colours and whether you think colour matters really or whether you try and match your hook baits or whether you try and make it stand out. So I'm coming to the end of the session now, it's sort of mid-morning and um, it feels as though bike time might be slipping away. It's The sun's out, you know, as I've said, it's really bright and um, the pressure's really high today. So if I if I had my floaters with me, I'd probably be looking to fish floaters um, or, I don't know, I might try a zig rig or something like that, but I imagine the fish are going to start cruising around near the top soon and fishing on the bottom just isn't going to be the one so I'll either go home or I'll give Ziggs a go but um, as far as this video is concerned we're, we're probably just about finished. If you've liked the video remember to subscribe and, and give me a thumbs up you know just to sort of let me know that I'm doing something right for you <laughs> and uh, keep an eye out on the channel because in the next couple of weeks I'll be doing a video uh, 10 tips how to save money when carp fishing so that should be a good one you know it's really expensive and uh, every little helps if we can save a bit of money so that one's going to be hopefully in the next couple of weeks depending on how much time I've got um, and yeah if there's no more fish on this session then that'll be the end of the video but thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one